on, look at everybody popping on. Man, if I could get 264 volunteers to show up next week to pull weeds, that would be great. All right. I'm very excited about this one today because we have some really, I'll give you a little glimpse of who we're gonna meet. Whoa, did you guys see that? How's the connection? Is the connection okay out there? Yeah? All right. All right. Well, welcome to Apricot Lane Farms Fridays on the Farm. I'm John. I also have um, my wife, Molly, and son, uh, who we're going to say hi in a second. And we're going to meet some really special lambs up here at the barn. But, you know, as you all know, most of our animals are always out on grass. But there's a reason that these guys are up here. And uh, Farmer Charlie back there, where's Charlie? Farmer Charlie's gonna tell us why they're up here and how we're helping them because one of them isn't doing so well. Um, all right, so how many of you have seen the, the Biggest Little Farm? I hope everybody who's on here has, has seen it. So, because if you have, then you know that the, the, the way that we farm is we use the diversity of an ecosystem, right? It's a collaboration with wildlife and livestock and plants and um, various insects, right? Um, and habitat to kind of work a system together in the most harmonious way possible. So every animal on the farm, we want it to have some, some role, right, where it's giving back and helping to regenerate our ecosystem. And so one of those animals that we use, right, is uh, sheep, right? So they're back here. And so most of you know that the sheep are out in the orchards grazing and there's a reason behind that. So I'm gonna take a second here, I'm gonna flip it around so you can, well first here, say hi to the team that's helping today. We've got, everybody's being, doing social distancing. There's Sandra, there's Ainoa, Ainoa's still trying to hide. There's Molly off in the background. And then here, let me, here's Charlie. Say hi to everybody, morning, Charlie. everyone. All right, so Charlie, just tell everybody a little bit about your role on the farm and what you do. Um, so I help uh, my whole entire team, we all coordinate the whole livestock program and we're moving cows every day, we're moving the sheep every day, the pigs every day, and then we take care of all the guardian dogs and then one horse, Rico. Exactly. All right. So Charlie, t just briefly introduce us to who we have right here and then we're going to come back to these guys at the end. So stick around for the end because we're going to learn why one of these guys isn't doing so well. Okay. Well, this is Sheep Mama. This is 65. And then she had three triplet boys and um, we had some trouble with number 37. So it's 36, 37, 38. All right, so one of the questions we're gonna sort of answer is, is the question of what are the role, what role do sheep play on this farm? Um, Does anyone out there know? Does anyone want to guess? You can say it out loud, scream it in. Oh, and by the way, if you're having trouble throughout this, seeing the images, because the questions that you're posting get in the way of the images that we're gonna play for you. If you just touch the screen, uh, it'll kind of reset. You'll understand what I mean when you see it happen. But what is the role that sheep play on our farm? Do you know? Uh, I wanna hear what they have. Oh, okay. <laughs> They've already guessed. Yes, manure, someone said. Grazing, exactly, right? Helping yeah. to cycle nutrients back into the soil. They're building the soil they're building the soil of, of the farm. And now we have, a, do you guys hear the blower off in the distance? Molly's calling the farm. Oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding Molly me. Trevor. We're calling Trevor. Trevor's out there pollinating our apricots like a bee with this blower that blows pollen, so. All right, so um, here, I'm gonna show you a clip of, this is what the ewes look like when they're out there grazing. So now you have to bear with me uh, because this is the first time we're doing this. So there's gonna be all kinds of weird things happening. Hopefully this is the one. There we go. Look at that. They love, so that grass has nutrients in it and as it goes through their body, right? Their room and they're herbivores, right? That's what a sheep is. It's an herbivore. They eat grasses, right? Legumes and they even, you see them nibbling on the leaves of the, of the citrus trees. Hopefully you can still hear me. I'm talking loud enough over that, right? So then they cycle that. When it comes out their poop, 
right? And their urine, they poop that right into the, into the ground and that helps feed the soil, right? And that sort of activates this amazing life of microorganisms that exist in the top 12 inches of soil that helps to feed plants, right? And so herbivores help to build soil. So that's one of their, you know, really important roles that they play. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? All right, here's a question. Does anyone know what a mama sheep is called? And we're gonna do a qu we're gonna do a, like a five question quiz at the end, um, at the end of this. So hopefully you'll remember some of these things. Let's see if anyone's guessing right. Hello from Paris. Okay, you. Yes, Marty got it. A you. So a mama sheep is called a you. Oh, and mom's taking a tinkle. I don't know if you can hear that in the back. <laughs> Live, live Instagram. All right, so what else do we have here? Let's do another question. Um, all right, this is cool. All right, so why is springtime the best time for lambs to be born? Why is springtime the best time? What happens in the spring, right? The grasses are growing, right? And the mom has to make all that milk for those lambs. So she needs a tremendous amount of energy. So we try to make sure that we, our breeding program lines up with the lambing season happening in the spring, right? And that's a really important time. And here, I'm gonna show you a cool, this is really cool. So when lambs are happy, right? Their happiest moment is of course, getting the milk from mom. But watch what happens, watch what happens to their tails. Watch what happens to their tails when they latch on to their mom. Watch this. There, they're latching on. Look at how they punch like that. I heard once that the reason they do that, it, it actually helps the mom's milk drop. So she actually starts dropping milk into the lower part of her udder. Look at those tails. That's how you know you have a very happy, happy, happy lamb. And that's what we look for. We'll look, great. we'll look out in the orchard and just make sure that we're actually seeing happy, waggy tails. All right, here we go. All right, uh, all right. Does anyone know how many days a lamb is inside of a ewe's belly? How many days or months? Yeah, slapping the bag. That's what they do, right? I saw that. How many days? All right, 147 days or four and a half months. And so if you're a little one, you were inside of your mom's belly for, well, we used to say nine months, but moms have taught everybody in the world that it's actually nine and a, nine point five months, right? That matters. Uh, so that's two, what is that? How many days is that? 280, is that right? 280 days for a human, but a lamb, right, is only in the belly baking for 147 days. All right, so do we have another clip to show everybody? And we're, oh, you know what? While we're, hey, Molly and Bodie, you want to come over and say hi? Yeah, if you saw the, uh, f the film, then you know that my wife and I um, started this farm as, as a, a couple with no kids, and we ended up with one little rabbit of our own a couple years in. So you're going to get to say hi to them. Here we are. They're trying to make their way through. There we go. Okay, Molly, it's taking a lot longer than we had expected. We didn't rehearse. We didn't rehearse any of this. Hi! Here we are. Come on over here and say hi, Bo. So this is Molly, my wife and partner farmer. Hello. And my son, Bo. Hey, Bo, you want to tell everybody your favorite thing about living on a farm? What's your favorite thing? What do you think? He wants well, to make it a good answer. I don't have a favorite thing. Do you, what's your favorite part about walking around the farm? What do you like about the farm? <sighs> I just like, I don't know. There's so many stuff I don't, I don't know what I like about it. One time you told me you liked being on the farm because you get to live inside of something. You get to live inside of what? Well, nature. <laughs> yeah, you like living inside of nature, right? What food are you liking on the farm right now? Well, snappy season, snap peas. Snap, snap peas. Snap pea season. What's your favorite fruit on the farm? Um, uh, every, every season I have different favorite 
fruit and well I don't know I, I just don't you probably like okay. all of them so what's yeah, coming up too soon yeah. we have blueberries coming up okay maybe I'll like that <laughs> you like blueberries right blueberries and then mulberries are coming yeah and peaches are coming soon okay yeah any of those um all right so I like those. And He's we very, had, we yeah. actually had a hard thing yesterday happen on the farm because what's no longer in the garden? Carrots. There's no more carrots. And that I was. Really, and I really wanted a carrot. Exactly. And when the carrots go, that's it because there's not any more carrots for a little while, and that's that's the harder part. And that yeah, that's called eating seasonally, right? Yep. That's eating to the seasons. But the good thing is, when the carrots go, the snap peas come, and the snap peas are the next favorite. <laughs> all right cool thanks guys thanks Absolutely. for saying hi we love hi. this this is so great we like to share the farm with you guys all right have, we're, have fun all right we're gonna learn yeah. see you later bo see you later <laughs> all right so uh another cool fact right so the first time that sheep have a baby usually it's one but somewhere around the second time or third time they give birth the next season or so they start having twins and even triplets and that's what you're gonna see right here today. We're gonna to meet some actual triplets who are up here, right? Like I said, and talk about why they're here. Charlie's gonna tell us that one of them's struggling a little bit, so we're gonna show you how we help them. But here, I'm gonna show you a clip. I hope I didn't lose you guys. Let me see if I can, it's like clip number three. One sec. Having a hard time doing this type of thing. Here we go. There we go. So you see how the babies are being uh, being cleaned off by their mom. This is a really important sort of bonding moment, right? She's licking them off, cleaning them off. She's warming them up. She's encouraging them to stand, right, to take their first sip of milk. You saw the guardian dog over there watching. And this is this is when as soon as like, if we get involved in helping a lamb be born, we make sure we get out there and put that lamb right in front of that mom right away so she knows that's her baby right and they start to recognize each other's noises and the sounds that they make they're very unique and the ewes aren't the only ones helping right there's somebody else out there helping does anyone want to guess who out sometimes gets involved in helping not besides us in helping clean off lambs here i'm going to show you this is the answer this is who else is out there they're like the nurses Watch this. Those are the guardian dogs. And they get involved too. It's a, it's a whole neighborhood affair. And to be honest, I think they like the salty taste, but we like to think that it is truly just to help. Okay, so guardian dogs, those are, those are called Great Pyrenees. Here, let me back it up. It's a little loud. All right, those are called Great Pyrenees Guardian Dogs, and though, there's, a, there's several different types of, of dogs used to help protect lambs from, you know, wolves or coyotes or bob, or sorry, mountain lions or even other dogs that might be like around a farm. We use Great Pyrenees, and you know, we don't train them to do that. We get them when they're little puppies, like 13 weeks old, and we just throw them in there with the sheep, and uh, the sheep beat them up a little bit, but eventually the dogs start to think that they're part of that family and they start to be the protector of that family. Look, I got a little visitor that just came up and said hi. Um, and so that's really cool for us because that helps us sleep well at night because we know that you know, they're out there and, uh, and um, here, I'm gonna show you this, and they're being taken care of. And we're gonna roll another clip of a, a guardian dog here taking care of an older lamb. And that lamb is okay. He's just falling asleep. He's like at the day spa. He's so content. And we have some other fun things that these guys do. All right, there's, this is a... <laughs> so here's another fun thing they do. A lot of times when they're out there... Um, they're, you know, they're young, they're, they're kids, they're playing, you know, so they're, they're hanging all over their parents and climbing on them and stuff. And so we'll, we'll catch moments like this. And there's a couple of reasons they like to go up and do that. One, it's fun for them to play. To, look at it. Is that how moms feel right now throughout the world? 
with their kids at home. Play with me, play with me. What are we going to do? I'm bored. And they're also staying really warm with light. Sometimes we'll even hear, I think we'll see it in a second. I won't, I won't give it away. But sometimes they'll hop up there and fall asleep and even try to surf. But they'll hop up there and actually sometimes, um, you know, sleep up there. And some of them are actually pretty good at surfing, like this one here. Look at that. Okay. All right. So, all right. I think it's time for, all right. So we're going to learn a little bit about the barn, uh, our barn lambs. And so I'm going to turn this over to Charlie. All right, Charlie. Why don't you tell us now why why these guys are up here? Okay. You can come down a little lower for yeah, us. Sure. Um, so we had triplet boys over here, and this little one, this is 37. And uh, 37 was just a little slow getting to the udder for food out in the field, so we decided to bring him back to the barn so we could help him. All right, so do we know why he was slow? Um, you know, I, we don't, uh, we just know that he probably couldn't have done it out there alone. So we decided that, um, we could assist him in that way. So if he's having a little trouble competing with his siblings for milk, what are you doing up here to help make that easier for him? And can you show us? Yeah. So, um, so when he was born, he was very slow to find the udder. Um, he wasn't in the right position. He was kind of guessing where it was. He would walk up to her chest and kind of to her back legs. He'd walk up to his brothers and try to milk off of them. <laughs> and so we kind of, you can see now that he even has a little bit of a suckle going. So he's practicing and we'll kind of position him in the right way. Cool, let's, sh let's show us. We'll go do that right now. And look, there's the, see the, the siblings are already in there. So obviously if this little guy over here is weaker, he's going to have a harder time. So Charlie's going to help him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brother off. I'm going to put him on. So you see how he's punching the bag now and he's really suckling. He's even on one knee. He's learned all of that from days and days of kind of putting him in the correct position and holding the mom steady so he can remember where he needs to get milk from. Um, yeah, he's doing a great job though. So normally you would actually hold the mom just to kind of help her stand still while the weaker one is sort of learning how to do this thing. Like Charlie pointed out, see how he's on his knees? That's a, really, a lot of times when we're out there and they're first starting, we'll try to help them learn how to get down on their knees so they can get the right angle, right, Charlie? Yeah, and um, yeah, he uh, is learning very, very quickly, but it is a long process that we've actually dedicated a lot of time, and so he'll actually be going back out to pasture on Monday, which is really exciting. All right, cool. All right, Charlie, so hang with me here because we're gonna, do, so we're gonna open it to questions. If anybody has any questions for Charlie or myself. Um, oh, somebody's asking, do we sell wool? Do we sell wool, Charlie? We do not sell wool. And do you know why we don't sell wool? I do. Um, Dorper sheep have hair that's kind of like fine, thin hair rather than wooly hair. So, um, well, it's a combo, right? Yeah. Okay, we'll go down here. It's a combo. It's they, they're a hair breed, right? So it's a mix of hair and wool. And so you really can't spin that. So... Uh, it's not something we can sell. And because they're a hair breed, um, which is kind of confusing when we say they're a hair breed, but they're a hair breed, which also means that they shed. So we don't have to shear them. And um, every, you know, in the summer, usually their st sides will start shedding. That's why a lot of times if you see images of our sheep, they look like they have the mange, like they're losing hair, but it's really just them shedding off their, their, winter, um, their winter hair and wool sometimes. Um, how, oh, do we dock tails? How long do they nurse? That's another question. Um, we used to. We used to dock tails, and that means that actually, like, we they, this has been for you know years. People have docked the tails of, of uh, lambs um, because they get something called fly strike. So if they end up with a lot of mess, a lot of poop on their backside, and the tail covers that, 
it's that that area remains moist and then flies start to land on that and lay maggots in it and it becomes an infected situation so the standard has always been to dock the tail to actually cut the tail off but they do it in a way where they put a band around it and the tail just drops off so it's not an immediate cut um, but we don't do that anymore because we've we've learned that we don't really have that problem if we keep our fly numbers down and how do we keep our fly numbers down on the farm I'm asking them, and I'm asking you. How do we keep our fly numbers down? Does anyone know? Let's see. All right, we use chickens to come in behind. Yeah, nice, exactly. Who's that? Jules? Jules, P-I-N-N-I. -N -N -I. Um, so uh, we use chickens to come in, and the chickens eat the, the maggots, the, the fly larvae, out of the poop before they can become flies, and that helps keep the numbers down. Um, Another question. Okay, why dorpers? Um, oh, why dorpers? So this, yeah, we didn't even talk about that. This variety of sheep is called a dorper. Um, they are a South African breed. And the reason we chose them is because the climate in South Africa is somewhat similar to here in California. And they do really well in you know this type of Mediterranean sort of climate, but also with um, really poor forage. So if you put this animal on really good grass, they're gonna actually grow really fast and, and be a lot healthier. So they're just used to being in a much more tough environment, and we wanted a hardy animal like that, a hardy mix. And so they're a cross between a Dorset and a Persian uh, sheep. And let's see. Uh, how is Emma? All right, we're going to do a, a live stream about Emma. Emma's good. She's alive. She's, great. She's huge. What does she weigh now? 650. 650 pounds. I think pounds. it grows every day. <laughs> <laughs> and then, all right, one more question. How often do sheep have babies? Well, here on this farm, we breed them once a year um, because we don't like to stress the moms and we want all the lambs to be born when? Asking me. Uh, you and them. Mm -hmm. Spring. Springtime. Spring forage. Cool. Hey, and while you've been doing this, if you notice when your video was, when we were playing the videos, if all of a sudden the text on screen is blocking the videos, if you just touch the top of your phone screen, it'll it'll hide all of those questions, or at least it drops them down to the screen so you can still see the video. So like when I do this, right, and then if you started typing a question here, it would block. <laughs> Yeah, the text would block it. <laughs> Charlie shot that. And we're doing it all year. I've never seen so much surfing. lamb surfing. Mom surfing Not contest. <laughs> all right, quiz. All right, here's our quiz. All right. First of all, how are we doing? This is our first ever live stream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Right is on a scale from one to a thousand, just so there's lots of wiggle room. Wiggle room. It's a variety. Like five yeah. In our all right. All right. So here's our quiz. If you were paying attention. All right. Question number one. What is a mama? Can you move over there for me? What is a mama you called? You just said. Oh, damn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Back up. Back up. Backspace. Backspace. If you said you, you're right. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, what kind of diet does sheep have? Say we got some guesses. Look at those people that guess you. How did you guys know the answer? <laughs> Unbelievable. All right. What kind of diet? What do they eat? What are they called? They're an herbivore. If you said that, you were right. All right. Um, how do the sheep help enhance our farm? How do they help enhance our farm? Yep, they eat grass, but what do they do in the process of eating grass? A lot of you said herbivores. That's great. Oh, it's the delay, of course, yes. There's a delay. Um, yeah, so they, they cycle the nutrients. The poop cycles the nutrients back into the soil. That's a really important component, right? Regenerating. Yep. So, I mean, actually, herbivores are fairly inefficient. In other words... Um, the, what they eat, about 80% of what they eat nutrient-wise, actually gets spit right back out in, in, in the urine and the poop. So they're not actually taking, is, they're not taking 100% of the nutrients that they eat. They're actually cycling them back in. So it's actually a pretty sort of symbiotic sort of relationship between you know, grasses, soil, and herbivores. 
Um, that inefficiency is a really important part. All right, here's another question. How many days does a lamb spend inside of the mom's belly? How many days? Give or take. And if you said, if you said 147 days, that's about right. So about four and a half months. All right, last question. How do the ewes bond with their lambs? How do they bond that first day? What is one of the bonding techniques? Charlie will now demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, look at this. Then look, this, look, this ewe's like, yeah, I'll, that's look, my that's baby. Mine. Hey, Mom. That's right. That's right. They clean them off. All right, cool. Is yeah. there anything else for our first live stream? That's it, I think. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. We're going to do this as long as we can uh, every Friday at 10 o'clock. Um, where's Charlie? Every, every Friday <laughs> at 10 o'clock um, here at 10 o'clock Pacific time. Um, we love your questions. Do we know the next subject yet? Have we picked one? No, let's get some recommendations. Yeah, we need some recommendations. We're like maybe guardian dogs. Should we do one on guardian dogs? Maybe Emma the pig, chickens, maybe hawks. Um, you tell us, write in and tell us if that would really help us. Then we'll kind of we'll kind of announce sometime in the next few days what our next one's going to be. All right. Um, what other things can we uh, share with them before we leave? Oh, and they can say goodbye to to Bodie and Molly. Bye, guys. Someone said, here, that was good. I just, I just ate almonds, so they might be in my teeth. Okay. Hi, guys. How's it going? Hi. We hope you learned a few things or just felt better by hanging out with us a little bit. It's chilly here. Yeah. It was really great. Emma. Great... Somebody likes Emma. We're going to, yeah, we're going to do a piece of maybe Emma or compost. Those nice. are some of the ideas. Oh, your workers. That's a great idea. Yeah. On the, yeah, on the team. That's a great idea. There's a, and here we're, we're actually out by the pond right now too. And Bodhi to, commented this morning on the amount of birds and there are an extra amount of birds out this morning. It sounds very nice. Cool, well thanks for coming up and saying hi to us No guys. problem, we'll see All you guys right. later. And I wanna thank the team here. We've got Sandra, where's Sandra? And Sandra, right, I know. Uh, thanks for helping us put this together. And Amy, our editor who helped put those clips together. Um, and thank you to our whole farm team who's still here working. You know, we're considered essentially like a grocery store. We have to keep food going. So a lot of our team members can't be sitting home being quarantined um, because we're trying to get food to our customers. You know, where do we think the food comes from that, that, you know, is in the grocery stores? It comes from farms. And so these guys are here still every single day with a more skeleton crew. So I want to thank all of them. And, you know, if you know a farmer, you know, give them a, don't give them a hug. Not even a fist bump. Just thank them virtually um, because we're all out here still trying to make the food thing happen. Um, looking forward to doing this next Friday at 10 o'clock Pacific time. Tell your friends, uh, tell your uh, tell the teachers, homeschool parents, although I, I think the entire country is homeschooling right now. So it's a, a nation of homeschool. We're just trying to help make it a little bit easier while we're all in this mess together. All right. We love you. Thank you very much. Bye bye.